Welcome to CAS 133 Basic Computer Skills, Microsoft Office, Columbia Gorge Community College, The Dells, Oregon, Linda Hewitt Instructor. In this video, we're going to talk about your final project for CAS 133. You have two choices. You can either do a PowerPoint or you can do a photo story. We're going to talk about the PowerPoint first and then we'll talk about the photo story. This video will actually be included in two different weeks worth and you do not need to start working on it until it is actually the beginning of finals week. I will put this in one week earlier so you can start to think, gather ideas, get um, pictures if you need it, anything like that. But it's not expected that you actually start working on your project, but it gives you a little lead time to be thinking about things. So they do have the icons for, for listening to each slide, so you can go through and do that as well. Your name does need to go on the title slide. If all the photographs are yours throughout the whole PowerPoint, you may want to give yourself credit on the title slide as well. That way there's no question who took the pictures. It is due during finals week, that final Saturday at night at midnight. And at midnight it's due, but I leave it open a few more hours just in case you start your upload at 11.59 and it takes, you know, two hours to upload for some reason. Some people with slower internet, that might be the case for. But once that link closes on Sunday morning, I do not accept any more final projects. Now there are very few exceptions to that, but since you've had a full week to do it, even something happening Friday night, should not be an exception to you being able to complete your work because you should have it done before the 1159 on Saturday night. However, there are a few exceptions, major family, major emergencies, uh, babies being born suddenly during that week, especially in an emergency type of situation. Just know that you may have to give me actual proof, not just, oh, by the way, I may not be accepting that. Um, so given that, just assume that you need to have that uploaded and uploaded on time because without having the final project completed the highest grade you will get in CAS 133 is a C. Even if you had a hundred percent going into it if you don't do the final project you come out of it with a C. So and like I said other than maybe a very few exceptions that I will leave the door open for just in case of um, just assume that no project no A or no B. So what must you do? Well, you must complete it and upload it on time. It is worth 100 points. If you want to do sound or music in PowerPoint, I really suggest you probably look at Photo Story instead. Um, PowerPoint's kind of cranky with that. It gets better with each version, but still, you're always kind of pushing the edge of success there. You need to think about how you can use your final project, whether it is a PowerPoint or whether it's a Photo Story. And there is a separate PowerPoint on photo story we'll go through in a minute. The you must have is a minimum for a 70% C. That's what you must have for me to give you a 70% for a C. However, if you want an A or you want a B, you're going to have to do more. So you now know what the minimum is. Sometimes students will say, what is the maximum? How many slides can I have maximum? Well, 200 is probably past maximum. Make it reasonable. If I can't take the time to get through the whole thing and I'm going, oh my gosh, another slide, that did not help you. So making it longer just to make it longer is not successful either. However, 15, 20, I had one gentleman that did probably close to 30, 35 slides and we enjoyed every single one of them. He did an absolutely excellent job. He had all of our attention. We were just like, wow, okay. And it wasn't a face-to-face -face situation where he presented it, but it was a wonderful slideshow. So given that, it's, it's kind of like, how much can you wow us? Not how many slides can you do. It's not a count. It's a effect. You do need a title slide and a sources slide in addition to that. So that means that uh, for a C or nowhere under eight, if you don't have a sources slide, then that'll be your ending slide of some sorts. You probably need to at least give yourself credit someplace throughout it. And yes, I am very, 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 very picky on sources being given. If you don't do sources, you stole it and you broke the law. 
It's that simple. Why would you get a good grade for stealing something? That makes no sense to me. So therefore, you need to make sure you have supplied the sources for all of your pictures. And telling me it's Google is not good enough. Oh, I went to Google.com. No. That's like if I asked you, where are you? And you said Rand McNally or GPS. Rand McNally Maps or a GPS is your tool. Google is your tool. It is a search engine. It is not where you got the picture from. The picture came from www.thisismypicture.com or whatever the website's name is that you took it from. That is what you have to supply to be considered giving a source. So make sure you give the specific exact website and the more specific, the better. I should be able to click on the information on the link and go directly to the website and be able to see the picture that you used. That's what the law says you must do. Also, you must put that www information on the slide with the picture, not at the back, but on the slide. That is also what the law says. Now, in photo story, we talk about how we work around the fact that that's a very difficult thing to do. And so there's a slight revision of directions there. But for PowerPoint, you must give it right there on the slide. At the back, your sources page will include any like research information. You looked up gray whales and you were telling about the gray whale and its life. That is research that goes on the back on the sources slide. On the slide with the picture of the gray whale needs to be the www that you got it from. And if you took your own picture, make sure you give credit to yourself so that you and I both know who did the picture. Okay. So if you meet the minimum with good quality, you get a C. If you want an A or a B, you need to do more and you need to try for the wow factor. This is your chance to show me what you can do and to be creative. You've been following step by step up to now. Now take that and apply it and make that creative presentation. Think about how you could really use it. If you're needing to make a presentation at work or for school, you can use it for another class. I had one student that said that they had issues with the other teacher allowing it to be used for my class. I don't have a problem with it because I'm looking for something different. You're doing a history class and you're doing research for your history teacher. They're checking your research. I'm checking how you put your PowerPoint together. I'm checking, did you use good color? Did you use good animations? Did you use appropriate amounts of PowerPoint slides? Did you overpack it? Did you make it so that we can see the letters or did you put like white on yellow and we can't read it? Um, those types of things are what I'm looking at. I'm not really looking at the history information other than to enjoy what you present to me. So you may not want to tell somebody else you're also using it here, but remember, I'm looking for something very, very different than what they're going to be grading for. Something that you might want to use for family. Do you have a wedding? Unfortunately, maybe a funeral. Do you have a whatever coming up that you want to create something for? Uh, family reunion, 50th wedding anniversary, whatever. I'm pretty open to that. Just remember, I don't know your family. I don't know that's great Aunt Susie in that picture, and I don't even know that's you in that picture, to be honest. I don't know that's your child in that picture, so please make sure you put titling on all things so that I know what I'm looking at. It's kind of boring to look at a slideshow and go, hmm, there's a person, hmm, there's another person, hmm. There's that same whoever that person is. So please make sure you let me know who it is. It makes it much more enjoyable, therefore it improves your grade. Sources must be cited, we've already mentioned that. Um, it should be cited at the, end, at the end if you're going to do like a research paper, put it into a PowerPoint type of thing for, for a class. You're probably looking at MLA needing to be used. If you're just going to do pictures and just little quick like captions under them to say, oh, the gray whale lives in, you know, then you can probably get by with just the WWWs at the end for me. Some things you can try, things to think about that we've learned how to do. And don't make it just like so glitzy and cluttery that it looks like garbage. 
but if you use some of the things we've learned, that's going to obviously impress me, and therefore that's going to help your grade. So headers or footers, hyperlinks or inserting an object, pictures, clip art, using a background, whether it's the design template or whether you do individual slides with backgrounds, an animation scheme, whether they're all the same or whether you do some custom work, slide transitions, adding an appropriate closing slide. It's always nice to know that the show has ended. When I get to the end and it just suddenly goes away, it's like, okay, did they turn the whole thing in? Is there something missing? Uh, did, I, did I get to the end? Don't leave me with that feeling because that doesn't help your grade. You can do quick styles, you can do word art, you can add clip art, you can add pictures, shapes, shape effects, design, colors, fonts, effects, tables, charts, drawings, paint pictures. If you're somewhat artsy and you do artistic stuff and you want to take like photographs or scan some of your artwork, um, if you draw on the computer, you can add drawings. Those types of things are all obviously perfectly acceptable. Again, please give credit to the artist so I know that that's your work and that you didn't borrow somebody else's. If you don't know how to do a hyperlink, you basically find your web page, www.pepsi.com, whatever it is. You click on the www.pepsi.com. You copy it. You can do a right click and copy or you can do a control C and copy. Then you paste it on the PowerPoint slide, and then you click the enter or spacebar, and this hyperlinks the link. And it only works when it's in this type of view in the slide show view. The other word is you can type in pepsi.com, or type in visit Pepsi, and then you can highlight that, go up to the top where it says hyperlink, insert hyperlink, and paste in that www.pepsi.com, and then when I get to the link in the PowerPoint, it says, visit Pepsi, and I can go visit Pepsi. Now, obviously, you're probably not going to really use Pepsi in it, but it's a good one because it's short enough to use for an example. You can insert an object, so you click on the Insert tab, click on the object in the text box, pick the clip art or the picture you want to use, browse for the picture or the clip art, and go ahead and insert it. Now you can add movies and videos and sounds. The problem is if you start to do that in a PowerPoint and you really don't know what you're doing, what you end up with is nothing at my end. It doesn't work. Now, if you're pretty comfortable with making a folder, putting your video in the folder, putting your sound and the music in the folder, saving your PowerPoint in the folder, inserting from the folder itself, not from someplace else and then moving it, you have to have it all in there and insert from there and then zipping the final folder before you upload, and you're going, she's talking Greek to me, don't do it then. If you're going, yeah, yeah, I can do that. I've been there, done that, know how to do that. Then great, go for it. You can do that. But if you're going, huh, please don't try it. Just keep it simple, kind of like the textbook ones, but maybe a lot longer and a lot more cool things in it, but don't get some of the stuff that will get you into trouble as far as figuring out what to do next. You can add up animations, you can add transitions, you can apply it to all, and then make sure you check whether it's on mouse click or whether you're gonna be setting timings. Now, here's a little pet peeve of mine. You have a page with some information written. You set the timings and I get through reading the first four words and it's gone on. Oops, you had 50 words on the page. So, you need to make sure your timings are set such that a person that doesn't know what's on the page and actually has to read the material has time to read it. But not so that they have time to go get another cup of coffee while they're waiting for it to go to the next slide. So, doing timings is a little bit tricky to make sure it really times out correctly. If in doubt, don't do it. Zipped files. Now, for some of you, you can go la, 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 and stick your fingers in your ears and not listen because you probably won't be zipping. This is only for fairly advanced students that want a little bit of a challenge. If you've added a movie, if you've added a video, if you've added music, if you've done any of those things, you've put them in a folder, you've put your PowerPoint in the folder, you've inserted them from inside the folder, and now you're ready to upload them and turn it in. You can only turn one file in. That file needs to be a zipped file. We learned to zip files in week one. Fall back on your week one knowledge. 
right click, go send to, compressed, zipped, and then upload the zip. The rest of you, please don't turn it in in a zip. If all you're turning in is a PowerPoint and it doesn't need any of the extra parts and pieces, it's got pictures and that's fine, they embed and go with it. It's got clip art, that's fine, they embed and go with it, just like our book project. Please don't zip it. In fact, I will grade down if you're zipping it and you shouldn't be. So this will kind of talk you through that. And with Photo Story, obviously, you need to make it into the video before you upload it. So it's a WAV file, and we'll talk more about that in the other PowerPoint. But with the Photo Story, all you do is upload the WAV file. You are not uploading any of the other things that are already embedded. Now, you've got your first one done, and you're going, hey, that wasn't so bad. I survived that. That was kind of fun. If you're wanting extra credit, and you have not done two of the textbook projects and you would like to earn that extra possible 40 points you may make a second powerpoint project or you may make a photo story project it follows the same exact rules that the first one did so just repeat on a new topic maybe with some new skills now Occasionally, I have a student that makes a really nice PowerPoint. They maybe add narrations like I do to mine. They've done all sorts of things. But then they also want to try to make a photo story. So then they go in and they make a photo story and they do narrations on that and they do the motions and they make it into a video and they use the same slides on the same topic. Is that acceptable? Yes. If they've obviously put in extra work to convert from what they had in a PowerPoint to convert to what they have in a photo story and they've added some different bells and whistles to show the strength of each program which is a great way to show off the strength of each program then yes that's a possibility that can be done if you're making a photo story on maybe you flip houses I had one student that actually did so she made this PowerPoint on flipping houses but then she did the photo story and did all the narrations and the sounds and all of that with it and put music in the background to go with it for the photo story. Obviously two very different projects even though she used the same basic materials. The one that you like the best, the wow one, is the one you need to turn in as your final project because that's the one that could get 100 points. The one you think, well this is good, not quite as wow as that one, but it's good then that's the one you need to turn in for the 40 points of extra credit. If you have questions, it's always a good idea to ask. It's a lot easier to ask me than it is to find out afterwards that you assume something that's not correct. All right, so let's talk now on photo story and doing a photo story instead of doing a PowerPoint or doing one for the final project and one for the extra credit. So the same thing. Name goes on the final slide, on the title slide, excuse me. You have to have it turned in or you don't get a C, anything higher than a C, same basic information. If you'd like to try a photo story, you do need to create at least two PowerPoint slides to use in it. Often they are the title slide and the ending slide, like a sources slide, but they can be picture slides, they can have typed information. They could be scrapbook slides. You could actually go into PowerPoint scrapbook, really cool pages with multiple pictures and frames and words, and then turn them into JPEGs and put them into the photo story and then narrate them and add music. You do need to be sure you viewed all the how to's on photo story. Remember photo story cannot be downloaded on Windows 8. It may totally crash your computer. I don't know what it would do, but good things are not in store for you. But you can still do one by using one of the college machines in the library at the Dallas campus. They do have it installed on library machines for your use. You can add music from either within Photo Story or from another source, but you do need to make sure you follow copyright. Copyright usually allows you to use the first little bit of a piece, um, but because this is for in-class use, as long as you've cited your sources and you don't take it outside of classroom, don't take it to you know, church group or a convention or anything like that, you're probably going to be fine. You can add voiceover very much like we do here. It works really well in photo story. You can do it slide by slide. That way, if you mess something else up, you don't have to go back and start all over. 
If you're going to do it and your microphone says it needs to configure the microphone the first time, say yes. If it still says it the second time, just say no and try it. It'll probably work fine. After a two hour battle, I got so frustrated, I finally said no. And it worked perfectly and has ever since. So please be aware that that's something funky within Photo Story. Give it a try. Let it do its thing the first time after that. Just ignore it and tell it no. Make sure you do create a source of slide at the end for any information or pictures that come from someplace other than your own personal material. And because it is very, very difficult to put it on the direct slide like you have to with PowerPoint, I will let all of that go at the end. But like at the beginning we talked with PowerPoint, don't tell me you got it from Google. That's like telling me your location is a GPS. Doesn't work. If you're going to make the slides or when you're going to make the slides, just make your PowerPoint as normal, however many slides you were going to use. Save it as usual, then save it as a second time, and this time drop the bottom box to save it as JPEG. Think week one. Think how we changed how we saved file formats. This is what you're going to use it for. And instead of saving it to a TXT file or a whatever, you're going to save it to JPG or JPGE file. EG, I guess it is. It'll ask if you want to save all the slides or just that slide. If you have more than one, you pick all. Make sure you know where you're saving it. I usually suggest you have one folder for where you're kind of working everything at. That usually is the easiest way to go about it. And then just go ahead and save it and you should be good. And then, of course, this is just sort of walking you through how you go to file, you go to save as, you change it here and make it this GPPEG or JPEG here. Hit save. If you don't have photo story, oh, and then you just insert it into your photo story like you would any other picture. You go find it in the folder, in the folder it made, put it into your photo story using all your photo story videos that I've created for you to help you do it. You can go to www.microsoft.com. They change their site often. Look for the downs, downloads, search for Photo Story, and the one you want is Photo Story 3. It might say Photo Story for XP. That was what it was originally made for. It works on Vista. I've had it on a Vista machine. It works on Windows 7. I've got it on two Windows 7. It does not work on Windows 8, and it says that very clearly in websites if you Google and research it that it does not work in Windows 8, and that's part of the reason I'm resisting going to Windows 8 if I can, because I don't want to lose my photo story. Okay. Last thing is how to finish it up. People sometimes miss this step. You need to browse for where you're going to put it, and you need to give it a name, not photo story one. Okay. Making Christmas cookies, I mean, whatever it is. You want to go to the settings, too. That's the other thing you want to make sure you do. You go to the settings and decide the resolution you want. It affects how good the machine has to be for playback. I suggest the 640 by the 440 for older machines. For more powerful machines, the 1024 by 768 works. As long as you have it small enough, under 100 megabytes for upload, you should be good. Um, so when you get done, you can right click it, go to properties and see how large it is. If you get told you cannot upload it, more than likely you're trying to upload the actual photo story working copy rather than this wave copy, the WMV copy, because there's a huge file difference between those two. I've never had a student not be able to upload the wave file. Make sure you do that final story because the WP3, which is the raw photo story file, can be edited, it can be changed, which is great. You do want to save it in case you want to go back and change it at some time, but it usually won't upload well into Moodle and I grade down because you didn't finish the project. It's going to take it a few minutes to do what it calls rendering. It, it sits here and prepares your video. After it goes through that, it'll get to that next screen. And this is the raw photo story. This is the photo story with the WMV file. You can see the difference in the icon. Even if your machine doesn't show this ending part, you can see the big difference. This is what you want to upload. 
this is the one that is the finished video. This is your working file. Like if you see a typo or a mistake, you can go, oh, rats, and you can go back in. Or if you get here and you go, oh, this is way too big a file because you've right clicked it, you've gone to properties, you've looked at it and you go, ooh, 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 okay, I got carried away. You can go back over here and make it that smaller um, 640 types file so it's not as large a file. Again, like I said, with the with the PowerPoint part, the sources is a huge thing. If you don't give the sources or you only give me, I got it from Moot, uh, got it from Google, um, that's basically stealing and I take a very dim view of that for your grade. So to keep it simple in Photo Story, unless you're doing everything in PowerPoint and then moving it over, if you're just doing basically a couple of slides in PowerPoint and doing everything else directly in Photo Story, then you can use a sources slide at the end. I suggest you keep all your sources, your www.cutepicture.com or whatever it is on a PowerPoint slide and use that as your ending slide for this. Again, you don't want the video to just come crashing to an end and have me wonder if you got the whole thing finished or whether I have a working copy uploaded. You want it to have some sort of slide at the end, whether it's a blank slide, whether it's a sources slide, whether it's a thank you slide, whether it's a something at the end to let the person viewing it, in this case me, know that that was actually the end of the presentation. Again, you can do the same extra credit. You've already listened through that explanation, so I'm not going to do that because hopefully you've also listened to the PowerPoint information. If you have any questions, I suggest you ask them rather than to find out afterwards you did something wrong. 